yourself. Okay. Okay. So my name is Vadim, and I come from Baku, Azerbaijan. And it is a privilege for me to be here in Belgrade, in Serbia. It is a privilege for me to be a guest of Pastor Tomas and Eva. And I really enjoy my time here in Serbia. I really love the people here and I love the church and the nature and the weather. It is a great blessing to be here and I really relax and enjoy here. So, I wanted to share one thought about, let's start from Baku. Some people here or in Europe think like, when they hear Azerbaijan, they think, okay, it's something like Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah you know those donkeys, yeah. <laughs> Taliban, and desert, dusty roads. Yeah. So... And the reality is that people know very little, not only about Azerbaijan, but also Azeri people know little about other places. It happens like that. But it is not really important what you think about Azerbaijan or what Azeri people think about you. The real important thing is who God is. When I was a child, when I was 12 years old, and I was born in an Orthodox family, and my mom told me, you need to be baptized. And I said, why? And she said, because you will be closer to God. And I said, okay, let's do it. So we went to Russia, and I got baptized in the Russian Orthodox Church. And I was excited about that. When I came to church, I thought something great will happen. I was expecting to meet God in that place. So I got baptized. It was a usual ritual. I got water in my head and after that I got a piece of bread in, dipped in wine and then I got to kiss the cross and I was told that now I am Pravoslavny. And after that I felt deceived, empty, because nothing happened. I didn't meet God. I thought, is that it? And there is nothing more about God? And I thought, okay, if, it is, if God is like that, I'm not interested. I still believe that there is a God, but I didn't really care about finding him anymore because I thought, okay, if it is Pravoslavna Tserkov and it is the right place, and I'm not interested in that kind of thing. And later on, a librarian who worked in my school she came to our class to share about Jesus. And when she came, I thought, what can she tell me about Jesus? I already was baptized. I know who Jesus is. I saw even those cartoons about Bible. And I'm from Russian family. It means, you know, I'm Christian, so-called. But when she told me about Jesus, I found out that it, is, it was not in my concept she told me about someone who loves me. And although I was a teenager, I still did not believe her. And I thought, okay, a lot of people say things, politicians say things, but is there something behind these words? And I thought, maybe I have to do something. I thought I have to go to church, I have to put candles, maybe I have to learn certain prayers in order to, you know, get God's approval. But when I heard what she said, it's Jesus, he loves you, he did everything for you, he died for you, and what do I have to do to get it? Forgiveness of sins, eternal life. And she said, nothing, you just need to ask him. It is already there, he has done everything. And there is nothing more you can do, really. Just receive, just accept. And that sounded like a very good deal. I was excited about that. I thought, I will try it. I went home, and when nobody was at home, I kneeled, and I said, God, I don't really know if you exist. I don't really know who you are. 
But if these words, which I heard today about you, if these words are true, I want you to come into my heart and I want you to forgive my sins and give me eternal life. And when I said these words, joy filled my heart. I felt so clean. I felt like flying because Holy Spirit entered my heart. And I realized there is something about it. I want to know who this God is. I didn't believe in the Bible really. I thought those were fairy tales. But I realized that something amazing happened in my heart. How do we get to know God, who God is? How do we get to know each other? By spending time with each other, by walking our ways, by working together, by getting into difficult situations. That's how we find out, can we trust that person or not? Sometimes it takes years to find out who the person really is. So the same thing, the same way we go with God, we find out who He is. When I ask a person, can you come and help me? If the person says, oh, sorry, I'm busy, and you ask again, or maybe you ask him to go out for coffee, and the person says, well, I, maybe some other time, and you try and try and try, and the person is not interested. And you see, okay, this person is not interested. So with God, we try the same way. God, can you help me? Yeah, of course. He does. God, what do you think about this? And I hear that he answers my prayers. That's how I found out who he is. Later on, I had a dream. And I had a dream that I'm running, jogging on a boulevard in Baku. That's along the seaside. Beautiful place. And it was early in the morning, maybe six or seven. And I see Putin running, together with his bodyguards. Oh, really? Yes. And I was, I was so excited to see him. And he also noticed me and he said, come on, let's run together. Let's joke together. And we joke together and I feel honored to be next to him. And we talk and he, I see he's interested in my person. I share, his, I share my ideas, he shares his thoughts. So, and finally, I see we're coming to like a very official palace where lots of guests are very official people wearing these suits, very important people. And they see that I'm coming together with Putin. And after they come, they approach me and say, so, you are a friend of Putin? And I say, yeah, I am. And they say, so, what do you get from him? Like business, like opportunities. And when they said this, I felt like, no, I'm not there to get things from him. I'm just there to be a friend. I'm not interested in what he can give me. I'm interested in who he is. So this is the idea about God. We people, we are humans, and we often think about what we can get. But God is much more than what we can get from Him. God is great and amazing as a person, not what we want to get from Him. And this was the revelation for me from God. Yes, we do need to ask God for some things we cannot do ourselves. Sometimes we need job, sometimes we need money, sometimes we need to get healed, and lots of other things. But it is so good to come to Him, not because of what we want, or what we need, but because of who He is. And that is amazing. God is much more than what He can give us. He is much greater than what He can give us. And as I shared this morning, I have two daughters. And I used to come home when they were small. I used to come home, and every time I tried to bring them something, small thing. And I noticed that every time I come, they look into my bag. 
They don't even look into my face, but they look into my back, into my hands. What did I bring them this time? And I said, hey, look at me. I am your daddy. Love me, not the things I give you. And that was another lesson for me. Love God. Get to know God for who he is, not for the things he can give us. Amen. Wow, thank you so much. It was it was amazing. You know, uh I never liked jogging, but I think now I will start to do jogging because I want to be jogging with Putin. <laughs> This is un unbelievable, you know, but it's really like great analogy, you know, we can, we can be jogging, we can be called by God, hey, do you wanna, do you want to run with me, you know, and not because he gives us things, but because, because of fellowship, and this is uh, what we were speaking in these last Sundays about fellowship in the church, uh, one of the words for church is koinonia and it means sharing with each other you know we share thoughts we share ideas uh we listen the other we give what we have you know we share bread we share our pains our joys sometimes even uh people can share money with you you know so koinonia the church <laughs> you know we it's about sharing you know what we have we give and what we get we give to others, you know, beautiful, beautiful, getting to know God, being, being friend of God is better than being friend of Putin, although being friend of Putin is very powerful, it's a very powerful thing, thank you so much, and also we've heard about the Azerbaijan, you know, uh, I think Vadim told us, don't think it's like Afghanistan, you know why he said it? Because he wants us to go there. But I'm telling you, no, Azerbaijan, I think, looks like Afghanistan. <laughs> no, it's, it's a beautiful place. I've, I've never been there, but I've seen some pictures, some uh, videos about it. And speaking about Afghanistan, by the way, uh, we have a Bible school. Greater Grace has a Bible school in Afghanistan in the mountains. You know, the tapes and videos of Pastor Stevens are being played in, in Afghanistan mountains, which is amazing, you know, in this, in this uh, place of Taliban and, and Islamic, uh, Islamic faith, there is a light in darkness, light in darkness. And now I will ask you to turn into the book, first of John, chapter 4. And we will read here these verses. First John chapter 4. The epistle of First John, that's where we continue. Chapter 4, verse 1. So before we start, just another prayer. So dear God, thank you, you call us into fellowship with you. This is what we want. Uh, we don't want to live in a business relationship. What you can give us, what you can do for us. But we want to enter another realm. We want to, we want to share with you. We want to have a fellowship. Thank you, God. We want to be focused on your thoughts. In this time, as we read your scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so the first John chapter 4, we read a couple of these verses already a few times, but uh, we will do it again. First John 4, verse 1. Beloved, this is how it starts. Beloved, we spoke about this. This is how the Apostle John addresses the church. You are beloved. You are loved by God. And we spoke about this word. You know, this is agape. Uh, many translations, they use the word like draghi, uh, lyubazny. Lyubazny is closer. 
because this word in the Greek is agape, agape. So uh, it speaks really about uh, love. We are loved by God. Uh, this is the foundation of all the fellowship. It's difficult to fellowship with someone who doesn't love you. You know, you can do you can do business with him. You know, as a businessman, he has a good terms. You do business with him, but there is no fellowship because there is no love. You know, there can be even fear. Is he going to cheat me in this business? Am I going to lose? You know, that's why when you do the business, you have these contracts. You know, and the lawyers, and you have to sign in and put five stamps on it and and fingerprints and everything. But in a in a relationship, it's different. There is a love, which is the foundation of relationship. And this is something we need to understand. We have to understand. And I know we do, but I just want to be reminded myself of this. We are loved by God. At any situation, at any circumstances, we are loved by God. There may be times when God doesn't love what you do, but he loves you. That's a big difference. So let's remember we are loved by God. And also I can say by the grace of God, you are loved by this church. You are loved by me, by the pastor. You are loved by the, by the members of this church. And this is how it should be. And we will read this in a, in a later passage. Loving one another. This is the place where we get love from one another. This is how the church should look like. Because God is love. And if God is there, love is there. And I remember when I came to, ch to church first time, I was shocked. You know, these people were coming to me. They came and like, I love you. You know, somebody else, like so somebody you never seen in your life before, he came and he said, I love you. And he hugged you and kissed you. And you're like, like, are these people normal? You know, we are like shocked because we are not used to this behavior in the world, you know. But they just loved me unconditionally. And I was like, hey, hey wait, wait a minute. You, you cannot say this, you love me, because you don't know me. But the love is unconditional. That's why they can say it. They love you, not because you are somebody or because you are funny or handsome. No, they love you because they have this love of God. That's why they can say to a stranger, to a first comer, somebody who comes through this door, we can say, I love you. Because God loves you. And this love is flowing through us. We are just a vessel of this love of God. And you know, if you want to be loved, and this is also for the people on the internet, come to our church. You know, Pray and God will lead you into Bible-believing church. Because this is the place where you get love of God. This is amazing. And did you know that the love is the greatest power in the world? Because think about it. What made Jesus to leave all the heaven and worship of angels and comfort of, of, of the glory of God... And to become a man, being born as a man. This is what we will read in verse 2 and 3. And become a man and die for our sins. What made him to do this? What was the motivation? Love. It's the greatest power. You know, it, it moved God that he left his heavenly estate. And came and become a man and died for us. If there is a someone that you don't love, you don't care. But if there is someone that you love, you are really moved, you want to help. This is amazing how love of God can change us completely. It can change the direction of our life. It can change where we are. Well, I grew up in Prague. I thought it's the most beautiful city. Now I know it. Baku is nicer. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm destroyed. But it's okay. 
So I was living in Prague, but the love of God moved me from Prague and I came here to the Balkans. Why did we do it? Because we have some like financial profit from it? Of course. <laughs> That's why we do it, right? No. Because the love of God does it. Because we love this man of God. You know, we love the people on the street. And this is supernatural. Loving strangers. You know, people cannot love strangers. People are able to love the close ones, the relatives, the family. You know, and that's why you have this family. You can see this in Italian, Sicilian movies. You know, there's a family and they can, you know, lay down their life for the family. But who would, who would lay down his life for a stranger, for a sinner? Who would do this? And this is what we learn from God because he fills our hearts. And then it's, it's part of us. You know, it's not a command, like, do it. But as we fellowship with God, as we are jogging with, Put with God, not with Putin, as we are jogging with God, and we share his thoughts, and he says, what do you think about this? And what do you think about this person? And what do you think about forgiveness? And do you think that your love has a limits? And God is teaching us as we fellowship with him. And we are getting to know him. And then we learn that his love is unlimited, unconditional, unstoppable. You know, when Jesus was being murdered at the cross, you know what the people were saying? They were cursing him in his face. And he looked down from the cross and he said, Father, forgive them. They don't really know what they do. They don't understand the situation. I love them. Just forgive them. This is something. How we are learning from God himself as we walk with him, as we are jogging with him, as we are fellowshipping with him. This is so beautiful. So we are loved by God. You know, that's what the Apostle John says. I am the one whom Jesus loved. And when I am in heaven, I'll tell him, hey, Apostle John, come here, come here. I'll, I'll do this in this authority, you know, words. Come here. He will come and I'll say, I am the one that Jesus loves. And he'll say, yes, you got the point, you know. It's two of us, three of us, four, you know, another one, another one. We just need to realize that I am the one whom Jesus loves. This is, this is amazing. This is who we are. We are those that are loved by God. And, and we spoke about this uh, many times. So he says, you beloved. And now he's teaching us and he says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Believe not every spirit. It's a pistis. He says, don't trust every spirit. What's the spirit? Uh, in the Greek word, it's pneuma. Pneuma in English. Uh, that's why you have this word pneumatica. You know, the wheel on a car. It's filled with the air. So basically, the spirit means like this air. Also, the Hebrew word for spirit is ruach. And it means the flow of the wind. It's like when you open the window on one hand, on one side of the building, and the other window on the other side of the building. You can feel the stream of the air, how it's moving. You know, it's moving the curtains sometimes. That's the spirit. That's the move. That's the move of God. You know, the spirit was, was hovering above the waters when God created the earth. That's the spirit. It's invisible, but it just goes through. It passes by. And he says here, don't believe every wind of doctrine. You remember this verse? Don't believe every wind of doctrine. Every spirit which is behind different doctrines. And he's giving this warning to this church, to his believers, to his beloved. 
Uh, maybe you remember the story from from the Old Testament, Second Samuel chapter five. Uh, there is a story of the mulberry trees. You know they've been waiting for the battle. Second Samuel chapter five, verse twenty four. Pomerim kolo. Može, može. Može, nije problem. Okay. So now we have to move the car. I'll be back. Time for spiritual advertisement. <laughs> you can buy our t-shirts. Okay. Just give me a second. I'm sorry. I can sing the song. Do you want to? Yes, yes, please. I'll sing one song which I like to sing. I actually like to sing, but nobody likes when I sing, but you will have to suffer. Я не птах, що в небі вільно літає, я не лили, я що води росте, я дитина Божа, тому я знаю, і Господь мене за руку веде. Він веде мене по своїй дорозі, і він знає, куди маю я йти. Моя впевненість в однім тільки Бозі, тому знаю я досягну мети. Часом все так просто, просто як в сказці. Часом сльози сушить вітер в лице, та я все, да все співпрацює найкраще. І співпрацює і це сказано проси, і буде вам дано. Стукайте у двері, відчинуть вам, виглядайте і знайдете це певно, бо нам так то обіцяв Господь сам. Він же скоро прийде, це точно я знаю, і в той день я свого Бога побачу, я не птах, що в небі вільно літає. Ale v den hospodný ja poleču. Was it in Russian or Azeri? Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Wow, beautiful. I didn't hear the whole thing, but I heard the end. And I also understood a couple of words. Yeah. It says, I'm not a bird. But in the Lord's day, I will fly. Yeah. Wow, beautiful. So we had this uh, spiritual, uh, spiritual now song. Wow, I'll have to listen to it later. Good. So this is it. Do we know we will fly away one day? You know, do we know? Or do we hope so? You know, some people say, I hope I will fly away one day. But we know. We will see it here in the first John soon. So thank you for the song. And uh, back into Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 24. David is inquiring the Lord if he can uh, do the battle against the Philistines. And God tells him and says, and Let it be when you hear the sound of going in the top of the mulberry trees, then you shall... Tell yourself, for then shall the Lord go out before you to smite the host of the Philistines. You know, there are the mulberry trees. If you ever stood by the trees and there is a breeze and then it moves the, the leaves. You know, this is the story. You know, David was waiting on, on the spirit of the Lord, on the move, when he moved through the trees. This is the Ruach. There's the wind. And he tells us here, the first John, you know, don't be moved by every wind, by every idea which comes by. Because many people today, they are like, they call themselves Christians, but they are really unstable. Because there are different moves and winds and ideas coming. But he says, don't trust them. Don't trust these spirits but keep the word of God. You know, this is very important. This is the stability. And uh, 
we know that the angels are the ministering spirits. The Hebrews 1.14 says that the angel has been given to us as the ministering spirits. You know, the angels, that the people make the pictures, paintings. Uh, sometimes it's funny what they paint. But we have a description in the Bible. You know, it's, it's a spirit. Uh, it's a fiery spirit. You can read uh, in Ezekiel description of the cherubims. It's a four-wing angels. Then we have a seraphim. It's a six-wing angels. And uh, we know the name of some of the angels. One of the archangels was Lucifer. Uh, then he rebelled against God and he became the devil, the Satan himself. Uh, another archangel is a Gabriel and Michael, Michael. So we know these three names. Uh, maybe that's why one third of the angels fell together with Lucifer. This is written in Revelation 12, chapter 4. Because maybe the angels have been divided into these three groups under three leaders. Maybe the Lucifer, the light bearer, who was supposed to bring the light, the information. Then the Michael and Gabriel. You know, Gabriel is the messenger for Israel. Gabriel spoke to Mary. Gabriel was bringing the message many times. And Michael was, was the protector of Israel. He was fighting for Israel. He was the, the captain of this, uh, of this uh, angelic army. So maybe that's why one third of the angels went together with Lucifer. It looks like he was the captain of one third of the angels. And that's why they got influenced. And this is great just to realize that we have an influence on the people that have been entrusted to us. You know, the children, uh, the pupils in the school when we teach, you know, we have certain authority over them. And they really, they really honor the authority. You know, people in the nature, they honor the authority above them. You know, that's why people love Putin, because he has a great authority. You know, there may be someone who is no-name person, I mean, he may be saying the same things as Putin, but nobody listens to him because he has no authority. You know, the authority is a big thing. And we have been entrusted with the great authority by God. And we will see it later on. So these are the spirits. And, and as we are speaking about the spirit, I wanted to mention this thing. Maybe you've heard that people say, you are a body. And you have a soul, right? It sounds like very, very nice. And then I heard some time ago, like this clever thought, somebody said, no, you are not body with a soul. You are a soul which has a body. You know, somebody just inverted this phrase. And it sounds like, like really Christian, right? But it's not. I am mentioning this because really believe not every spirit, believe not every wind of doctrine, every teaching, but try the spirits, dokimatso, try them, test them, whether this is of God. Because this teaching, this idea is called dualism. And this is actually, this book is dealing with this big time. Because these Gnostics, they used to teach that the body is sinful, and the soul is the pure part of a person. So basically they said that the body is the black and the soul is the white. And here you go, that's a yin and yang, that's a dualism, that's the ongoing fight between the powers of evil and good, between the devil and God, but this is not Christianity. Because Christianity teaches that we are not dichotomous, made of two parts, but we are trichotomous. We can see this in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. There is a prayer and he prays, uh, uh, the Paul, uh, for us that the spirit, soul and body would be preserved for the day of his coming. You know, don't ever accept the thought that the body is the bad part, the sinful part. And I'm the, the good soul which is trapped in this body. No. Both the body 
spirit and soul, we are trichotomous, are part of us. We are not haters of the body. We, we take care of the vessel which is carrying the soul and the spirit which has been woken up or revived by the Holy Spirit when we believed. So we are trichotomous, we are of three parts. The Bible says it. These ideas about I am a soul entrapped in the body, it's a dualism, you know. It has nothing to do with Christianity. Because dualism, as we said, is a, is a, a death and life. It's a, it's a evil and good. It's a, it's a light and darkness. It's a white and black. But the Christianity is the empty tomb and risen Jesus who has conquered the death. And death, where is your sting? Christianity is a total victory at the cross and at the resurrection. It's not dualism. It's not ongoing fight. We are hypernikao. Hyper we are more than conquerors in Christ. We are not waiting for, for battling, you know, and, and left and right and white and black. No, we won the race already. Jesus won the race and we are just walking in the victories he has given us. This is what we have to realize. That's why he says in the following verses, uh, uh, By this know the Spirit of God. Every spirit which confesses that Christ came in the flesh is of God. Because these Gnostics, they used to teach that the body is wrong. Flesh is bad. So God could not take on himself the human flesh. And they were denying the humanity of Jesus in those days. Because they used to believe this dualism, good and bad. Flesh is bad and the soul is good. That's why they said God cannot have a flesh on himself. It was a wrong teaching and he says, this is the spirit of Antichrist. Now we are facing something similar but inverted order. People say today, yeah, Jesus was a man but he was not God. In those days they believed he was God but not man. Now Jehovah Witnesses, you know, uh, Muslims and other groups, they say, oh, he is a man, but not God. It's, it's the same spirit of Antichrist. And the spirit of Antichrist, we mentioned, ante means in the place of. There's the spirit which places himself in the place of Christ. They are trying to teach us who Christ is or show us another Christ. Anti. Christ, in the place of Christ. But we have description and teaching who Christ is. Uh, that's why also this uh, pseudo prophetess false prophets are teaching. And you can read in Revelation 13, there is a number of the beast. You remember this number of the beast? 666. Mm -hmm. And this verse says it's a number of the man. And we know from the Genesis when God created heaven and earth and animals and trees. And on the sixth day, he created man. Number six is the number of a man. And six, six, six is a false trinity made by man. You know, uh, Antichrist and the beast, they will represent the false trinity. They will represent the perfect humanity, perfect man. And they will supplement or place themselves in the place of Christ. And they will say, we are the God. And we've seen this many times in history. People claiming themselves to be the Christ, the Messiah. You know, uh, uh, the one who is in the place of Christ. Uh, and etc. So he says, don't be deceived by these spirits. Don't trust them. Don't believe them. Then he says in verse 4, you are of God, little children. This is such a great verse. You, you are of God. This is not a question, if you do good, then you will go to heaven. No. He says, this is it. You are of God. 
You are the children of God. He says, little children, you are saved. You belong to God. You are different. You are of God. You are not of this world. You are saved once forever. You are his little children. Is here little children. Technon. Little children. And he says, and you have overcome them. These false prophets and spirits. And the age of this world. You, little children, you have overcome them. That's why it's so popular, these movies, you know, like this little boy fighting like a huge beast. It's, it's from the Bible. It's David killing the Goliath. It's these little children who overcame the evil, lying spirit, deceiving world. A little children. There's not much required. Not big strength. You don't need to have a bigger muscles than Vadim or me. Yeah. Little children, he says, beloved, little children, know this. You are of God and you have overcome this world and these spirits. Because you have different thinking. And he says now, because greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. Did you know this? The one in us, God himself, is greater than the one in the world. That's why I said this is no dualism. This is not the picture maybe you've seen on Facebook, you know, Jesus arm wrestling with the devil. No. It's like the one in us is much greater. You know what it is? It's like, Done. Finished. We have the victory. We have the greater power. And that's why the great commission in Matthew 18 says, All power, all authority is given unto me, therefore go. Jesus doesn't say, You are strong, then go and fight the devil. He says, No. All the authority, all the power on heaven, on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go ye. And the one in you is greater. And the devil and the demons tremble. I don't want to ever receive the lie that the devil is destroying our work. Look at this, what it says here. Uh, it says, 1 John 3, 8. For the devil sins from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. For what purpose was Son of God manifested? That he might destroy the works of the devil. This is amazing. God came that he would destroy this work of the devil. The man on the alcohol, on a bottle. Jesus came to destroy this work. You remember uh, how uh, there was this uh, uh, people possessed by the devil in Matthew 8. They came from among the tombs. And Jesus came and he casted out the demons. And this man went home back clean. You know, the fathers who have demons who are on a bottle, on drugs, on a dirty thinking, they can be free. And Jesus says uh, in John 8, 36, you will be free indeed, truly free. No chains, no more chains. I remember we have a girl in Prague and she was standing on, on, a, on a tram stop looking at the trails. The tram was coming and she decided she jumps in and dies. She wanted to end up her life. That was the work of the devil. But one man from the church came and he saw this girl. And he came to her and he says, can I give you a flyer? Do you know that Jesus loves you? And as she heard these words, she decided not to jump in and end up her life. And she believed and she became a Christian. And now she is the child of God. And greater is he that is in her than the one in the world. We are destroying the works of the devil. We are saving people. 
We are changing lives. We have this power and authority. The one in us is greater. And you know what? He fears. We don't fear because there is no fear in love. Love casts out fear. We are loved by God. That's why he says, I love you, beloved, little children. The one in you is greater. You have the victory. You are the victorious. You have this great, amazing, awesome power. So we are here in this place uh, to deal with the people with depression, guilt, suicide, you know, uh, perverted, wicked hearts that we meet. People in the chains, in, in, a, in a slavery. And we can come and just tell them about this victory. It's not a battle of good and evil. It's not we come with the message, if you battle it, you will win it. No, we have the victory. Do you want to be free indeed? John 8, 36. Do you want to be free from this? Do you want to be free from your selfishness? You know, we spoke with a man yesterday and he said, I don't want to leave this type of behavior. And then we spoke about it and he said, you are right, I'm selfish. That's why I live this way, because I'm selfish. Because it fulfills me and basically I don't care about the harm I do to others. We can be free from this. We can be filled with this agape love which lays down life for the brothers. And that's what we hear later on here. Uh, verse 7. Beloved. Again, we are loved by God. Let us love one another. And it's so easy to laugh when you are loved. When somebody loves you and you are loved by God, you are loved by your pastor, you are loved by the church, you are so loved you are so full of love, and then, and then you realize you love somebody. It's so easy. It's not natural. It's supernatural flow. This is what God gives us. So just, just know and remember, you are loved by God. We don't live in dualism. We are more than conquerors. We are victorious. And we have the greatest power in the world, the love of God. Thank you. God bless you. Amen.